So first thing you want to do is get ready to remove this inner uh, hatch lining. And so we're going to need to take off these door handles, remove these uh, clips here, um, and then we can, we'll be able to pull the, the, the hatch lining off. So take your trim removal tool, and you'll see on these handles there are these little two uh, cutouts. You can insert the trim removal tool in there. And these should come off pretty easily, but be careful as the tabs on this will break easily. So just be gentle, don't give it too much force, just get it in there and then pry, and then it should come out. Uh, you also need to remove these two pin, uh, clips. So again, with the trim removal tool, just pry them off. Once you pop the clip up, they'll just slide right out. So these two 10 millimeter bolts will need to come out for both sides. Once you have all four 10 millimeter bolts out from the handles, uh, you can get ready to pull off the the trunk liner. So you can, if you have your privacy screen on, just pop this off, just put that aside. The first time we installed these tail lights, we went ahead and we removed these rubber stoppers here. Um, but these are these are a pain to get out because the way that they secure the tabs that they use, they're again they're broken very easily or they become loose very easily. So we realized that you can't actually leave these in here and just pull the liner off so it just hangs and you still have enough, plenty of clearance to get to the hatch mounted lights. So we're gonna show you that now. So you can leave these rubber stoppers on. Um, so you're just gonna put your fingers in, in here and just pull this right off. There's four clips holding it in. Should come off pretty easily. And once you get the middle part off, you can also just pull these sides out. This one already, this side already came out on its own. This one you just pull. Just a, just a couple more clips here. And just continue pulling the entire liner down and they'll pop out. So basically the rubber stoppers are the only thing that are, that's holding this trim in, in place. And this is a very light piece, so you don't have to worry about putting too much stress on those stoppers. But this way you don't have to worry about damaging these. You don't have to worry about getting new ones. Uh, we figured it just, it'd be much easier overall. To remove the hatch mounted light, there's two eight millimeter bolts here, one more eight millimeter bolt in here. And then there's this harness that you can just unclip. So here is the location of the third 8mm bolt. It's actually an 8mm nut. It's, uh, it's the last, last thing holding the hatch light onto the, the hatch. So when you remove this, you want to be very careful not to drop it because it's possible you'll drop it inside the hatch frame, which will then be very annoying to have to fish out. So go slow. Um, use a magnetic socket if you have one. So once you have those, the two eight millimeter bolts and the eight millimeter nut off, the hatch light should just pop off. Now to prepare to remove the, the actual tail light, uh, we highly recommend you use some painter's tape and tape off the edges around the light as there's a very high possibility of scratching your, your paint here while you're trying to remove the tail light. So better sa safe than sorry.
So once you have that taped off, all you need to deal with are these two eight millimeter bolts holding the tail light to the frame. Once you have those bolts off, the tail light will be loose. <clears throat> now, the only thing holding the tail light on at this point are two clips that are right here behind the light. So, what you want to do is grab the tail light firmly and just pull it straight away from the car. So, those two clips will become undone and you should be able to access the, all the wire harnesses and underneath. So once you have access to the back panel of the tail light, just take note of the connections here. Uh, again, this is the, the High Rev Sports uh, sequential tail light version one. So this will look a little bit different than stock if you're upgrading from stock tail lights, but um, just pay attention to the, the actual plugs. So we've got, this plug here on this on this white plug where there's only one tab on one side right see these other two ones with the gray tabs they have they have two tabs on either side and then this one has no tabs so the one with the single tab this actually is the one that you're going to pull the the harness off the plug okay so that you just press down on this tab and pull it out these two uh gray plugs with the two tabs these you're going to actually unlock and pull out completely once you pull these out if you're go if you're working with the stock tail light you'll see the actual bulbs uh, in this case just pull these plugs out or pull the bulbs out if that's what you're working with and this last one is just going to be this plug that you can pull out uh, on the, the, both the version 1 HRS and the stock, you also have this clip right here. So just pinch this to release this harness from the clip, and then your taillight will be free to remove. A couple things to take note of here as you're plugging in all the, uh, the wire harnesses. So the harness coming from the car, the one that has the black plug on the car side, okay? That is for the tail light plug that has the red wire. Okay? So the red wire goes into the black plug. So when you in, when you insert these, just um, make sure the contact points are properly seated in the plug. And later when you when you're testing out the lights if one of the functions wor doesn't work, like for example, let's say your brake light doesn't work, then find the plug that um, is the corresponding plug for the light. And if it's not working, just unplug it, flip it over, and plug it back in. That's, pro that's the number one usual suspect of lights that don't work after you plug them in. So Again, the red wire coming from the tail light, make sure that gets plugged into the black plug, okay? The yellow and black wire, this one gets plugged into the gray plug on the car side. The blue and black wire on the tail light, this is, this is the one that's actually just the plug. This gets plugged in right here, um, which is the only, it's the only plug here that has the, the correct size for this smaller, smaller one. So plug that in. And then you're left with uh, this, this last plug here. So this one, before you plug this in, with the version two, you can actually, if you, if you twist the, if you unlock this, if you keep pulling this wire out, you'll see this thick <coughs> harness in here that, reveals this, uh, this three dip switch panel. 
So you'll notice on the on the panel itself, um, they're numbered from one through three. Number one and number two. Number three is actually unused as far as I can tell. But number one, when the switch is on the side where it says number one, if it's on the, the numbered side, uh, it's the normal function where as soon as you turn the taillights on, you'll see the, the animated sequence in the, in the running lights. So if you want to turn that off and you just want them to be instantly on without any animation, you just flip the dip switch away from the number one and that's what turns the animation off. Okay, so if you want the animation on, make this, turn the switch towards one. If you want it off, flip it away from one. Number two is the, the sequence animation for the turn signals. So when you have the switch set to the side that says number two, it's the regular animated turn signal sequence. If you want it to just blink on and off like stock, then just flip this middle switch up away from the number two and you'll turn that animation off. And again, the third switch I believe is, it doesn't serve any function. So once you have your switch is set to the, your preference. You can just sneak this back in here. Then make sure the, the tabs are aligned correctly for you to get this back in and lock it in place. And then you can in, insert the final harness and you should be, uh, oh, there's also, there's obviously the this additional line for the hatch mounted light to complete the turn signal sequence. You'll grab the supplied uh, extra connection wire here and plug this right in here. Make sure that's secure and then your taillight should be ready to install. Our preferred way of running the turn signal wires up into the hatch is to simply remove this rubber trunk liner first, which you do just by simply just pulling up on this. It comes right off. You can leave the bottom part attached because you don't need to take it complete, completely off, but just pull this liner out. That way you have access to all this, this cavity um, that you can that you can really easily just tuck this turn signal wire into and that'll keep it completely out of sight and it'll make it super easy to keep clean and run up here to the middle So right here at the center of the top of the hatch if you look Under here you see this plastic plug located right here. We found that this is a great spot to route the wires through and it prevents you from having to run it over the the rubber lining which has caused uh, water leaks for some people. It also puts a crease in the lining as well so to avoid that uh, we found that this is a great solution to just utilize this existing plug here. You can just pop it off with a trim removal tool just comes right off looks like this so once you pop off this little plug you can drill a hole in the center of this to to route the wire through uh, what we did was we took a a rubber cable loom and just glued it to the cap or to the plug and that lets us create a kind of a more watertight seal and it makes it look a little bit more OEM. Uh, you can choose to do this or not, um, whatever is more convenient or thorough for you. <clears throat> so once you get your 
loom in place and tape it down. You have your, the rest of your wires ready to route. You can go ahead and replace the rubber trunk liner. So now you're ready to install the hatch mounted portion of the tail light. If you look on the underside, you'll notice that you, you have obviously your wires and then you have this metal pin. This metal pin will help it align in place. That just goes right here in this plastic uh, clip right there. And then the wires get all threaded through this hole, obviously. So with this uh, harness, you'll notice that there's this, uh, this switch, this rocker switch right here. Uh, when the the setting you see it currently in with the the circle pushed pushed down, this is the default setting for the sequence when you hit the turn signal. Um, so if the if the circle is pushed down, you'll have that animated sequence. If you push the other side in with the line, then this will just blink on and off uh, in one solid flash, like a normal non sequential tail light. So uh, you'll want to coordinate that with whatever setting you've chosen for the tail lights with the dip switch panel that was shown earlier. Um, or you could be funky and mix it up where you have one set to sequential and one set to solid. It's up to you. Uh, the benefit for the V2 setup is that you have that ability to choose um, whether you want the sequence or if you want just solid. The the hatch wire that was uh, routed along the side um, and you'll want to connect that with this yellow wire that's coming from the hatch mounted light so connect those together and then then this white connector slides right in clicks in and then this there's a little clip that this this connector mounts to right here you just slide that on and that also snaps into place um, accessory on and test all your lights to make sure it works before you button everything back up make sure the this rocker switch setting is where you want it you can just tuck that in here uh, if you want to ensure there's no unnecessary rattling you can wrap all this up in um, some tape and tuck it in nicely maybe add some foam if you want to